a developing story and the director of public prosecutions, Keriako Toviko, has asked the court to reopen the case of the late university student Masi Keino's death. The DPP claims that crucial evidence was tampered with during hearing Masi hit the headlines when she was mysteriously found dead after revealing, reveling rather, with her friends in Nairobi. In a new twist to the case that had slowly died out from the public's attention, and now the director of public prosecutions, Keriako Tabiko, wants the death inquest in Kano's case reopened. The DPP wants the Masi Kano case uh, file reopened on grounds that crucial evidence had actually been tampered with during hearing in 2012. The body of Masi Kano was found along Nairobi's busy Waiyaki Way. A police officer who had arrived at the scene told the court then that at first it looked like a case of hit and run. Further investigations revealed the great possibility that Masi may have been killed elsewhere and her body dumped by the road to give an impression of a fatal accident. The officer, identified as Thomas Obagi, uh, found that this could not have been the case. As he explained, he realized that several things did not add up and concluded that there was foul play. We'll continue getting details of this developing story for you. Moving on to something else that is currently happening in now Kenya leader Martha Karua is uh, set to give the party's report card on the Jubilee administration performance on economy. Karua has criticized government before for poor governance. And joining us on phone from uh, Nakanya party headquarters is Francis Mtalaki with the latest. Francis, tell us what exactly is this uh, news conference all about? Yes, thank you, Betty. I can confirm that uh, Martha Karua is here and the press conference is ongoing as I speak. And uh, what I've been able to pick from the press conference so far is that uh, Masa Karwa has raised two important issues. One, again, one is touching on the head speech and two about the corruption. And he says that people are looting in the, in the, in, 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 in the government. And he says that this is coming from uh, both the county level and the, and the national government. And he says that uh, he cites the, the, the failure by the Jubilee uh, co coalition, that, that is to uh, send CS uh, Anwai Guru uh, parking so so that uh, investigations can continue. He says that this is one of the key areas that he says that the NYS project is one of the examples that uh, 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 informs Kenya that there is corruption at the, uh, at the, at the Ministry of Devolution. And he says that um, at the country level there have been issues about uh, the wheelbarrow procurement and uh, also at the national level the issues revolving around the El Nino range. He says that uh, there's so much uh, uh, that there's so much uh, of the Kenyan revenue that is being looted there. And also one key point that he also mentioned is about the Eurobond. He says that Kenyans are not being able to be told that how much interest was earned and trying to break down the figures that uh, uh, have, have, that have been raised earlier by the, the CS uh, uh, Rotich, he says that uh, the 173 billion shillings which were earned for, in, uh, in June 2014 do not add up. There is a difference of uh, 86.07 billion, which now he questions the CS to come out clearly and clear the air. He also touches uh, some issues about hate speech, and he says that the political bickering that has been going around throughout the weekend I remember that uh, Kiambu governor William Kabogo also uh, denied that saying anything about to do with head speech. He says that the political temperatures need to, to tone down and he says that um, uh, he also fought the national government and uh, the judiciary for all these uh, issues that have been running revolving around the, the, the issues of head speech. Thank you. All right. Uh, Francis, just before I let you go, you mentioned a few of the issues that uh, Martha Karua has spoken about. Uh, and, you know, narrowing, narrowing down to uh, hate speech, where yesterday, you know, the issue about the judiciary uh, being a bit passive and dropping the ball in, this, in the fight against hate speech came, out, came about. Uh, did Martha Karua mention anything to do with uh, the judiciary and the role it plays in this whole saga? Yes, indeed, he did mention something about judiciary. He says that the judiciary, to some extent, is failing the Kenyans in terms of the prosecution. Just remember that he says that uh, most of the cases, uh, are the, uh, 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 most of the, 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 the political decisions who have been brought at the, uh, at the, at the, the, the judiciary desk 
are sometimes left scot free and they're saying that uh, so many cases have, have gone so free with uh, most of the politicians being said that there's lack of evidence. That is some of the issues. But he also said that uh, the national government is to blame because most of the politicians are said to be in parliament and that is maybe could be one of the challenges that judiciary is facing. Mutalaki, something else, so, uh, obviously about the state of the economy, uh, quite a number of leaders, and especially from the opposition, coming out strongly and criticizing the government, but uh, none is seeming to give any solutions. Did Martha Karua mention anything that uh, uh, can be put in place uh, of, uh, say, solutions of uh, what uh, can be done to improve uh, Kenya's economy right now? Really, in terms of the economy, he hasn't touched much of it, but... Uh, what he is questioning in terms of the government and the state of the economy says that Kenya, the, 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 the projects that uh, the Jubilee government has engaged in, I think, is, is, is trying to suggest that they are straining Kenyans, and that's why they had to float the Eurobond through the consolidated fund. And now the problem has been uh, in terms of the mathematics, which now, according to Karua, he says that in June 2014, uh, Kenya earned a total of uh, 173.91 billion shillings. And then a letter in the, this year, uh, the, the Kenya earned a total of 73.8 billion shillings, and now bringing a total to, to 247.7. But now the gap that are, uh, we, which is 86.07 billion is now the, what the Mata Karua is questioning about, and he's telling CS uh, uh, or to come out clearly and explain to Kenyans where uh, the interest was and, and why this gap is coming to 86.07 billion shillings. Right. Thank you very much, Francis Mtalaki. He's joining us uh, by way of phone uh, from the NAC party headquarters where uh, Martha Karua is, uh, giving, has just uh, concluded a news conference talking about a variety, a range of issues, including hate speech, the state of the economy, and of course, corruption. Well, moving on to another developing story, and this time from uh, northeastern Kenya. And the North Hor MP Ganya Chachu and uh, Master Beach Senator Abu Bakar Godana have raised alarm over floods, which they say have killed over 3,000 herds of cattle in the past three days in the county. Well, the two legislators say the floods have rendered all major roads in the county impassable and left an unknown number of people dead. Among the most affected areas are Elisami. And North Hoare and settlements within the expansive Chalbi Desert, which has been flooded. The two leaders say residents are in dire need of humanitarian aid. As of now, I, I can't conclusively say we have lost uh, human lives, but in terms of livestock, so many of them are perished, and we are fearing many more will succumb uh, to these um, uh, rains because they are in very weak uh, body condition and uh, so we are appealing to the government, we are appealing to the international community, to the NGOs and the, the donors to help the people of Northor um, with food, uh, with any support uh, that they can provide to enable them uh, to overcome this calamity. We have been hearing about lino preparedness we have been told some funds have been set aside for new preparedness. And in our case, what we thought was, uh, in terms of the conditions we are in, maybe we even expected to have programs like uh, rain, water harvesting, construction of dams and all that to prepare for that kind of harvesting. Nothing has happened. But now already we are in this situation. We are appealing for humanitarian assistance in terms of food aid to the people, and of course, we even expect with these heavy rains and the body condition of even the people themselves, because they are going to be these animals, we, may, we expect diseases. So we are appealing to the government, to the international donor community, to focus very much, carry out quick surveys throughout the county, and uh, come up with some mitigation measures.
Minister Secretary Joseph Ngaiseri is blaming leaders of the refugee community in Dadaab for failing to fully cooperate with the government in the war on terror. Ngaiseri spoke after leading a high-level Kenyan delegation in a tour of the world's biggest refugee camp on a fact-finding mission. The, uh, they assured the refugees that uh, they will not be forced to return home because of the repatriation exercise is actually voluntary. Okay, how long have you been here? So we came purposely to know and to talk to the refugee leaders on the plan of repatriation, uh, which is the government of Kenya and Kamala Somalia with the United Nations High Committee for Refugees is planning. And so basically that's what brought the delegation here. But this is the host community. We decided to come and participate so that because of the issue of the, the degradation of the environment, the issues which we are going to um, discuss with the stakeholders and the concerned people. And so that's why we are here uh, um, uh, today. And we had the opportunity of meeting with the CG leaders this afternoon. We air their views, they air their concerns and what the, their fears and, 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 and their uh, expectations and, and so I will be able to take it back and since I have uh, the, the lawmakers with me, I will be able to do this uh, on the different positions with regard to. Based on the Geneva Conventions uh, regarding the refugees management, that's why, and what I said uh, with the refugee leaders, that this country, there is no any other country in the world which is so humane like uh, Kenya. We have been hosting refugees for over a quarter of a century without any international body child. Apart from the United Nations, you have heard what is happening in Europe. And people, they want to distribute about 800,000 uh, refugee, 800, refugees distributed among the member states of Europe. Now, in Kenya, we've been hosting more than a million refugees. We have 600 registered refugees in, in the refugee camps. And so, I would like to, on behalf of the government, really, first of all, to thank the United Nations High Commission for Refugees for being a partner uh, in this battle. It's only the United Nations High Commission for Refugees and uh, some other uh, actors, but we have never pushed the Somali refugees or Sunadis or other refugees out of our country. So that's why we are here this afternoon and we will be able to take this back and uh, we we'll go now and work on the planning. So I think it's, um, generally, how, how, how has been the process so far? Because they, they have been going back to their country. How, how has been? Well, the process began in uh, 2013 and uh, the planned and the organized repatriation has actually commenced. Uh, so far we have got 5,000 5, uh, refugees who have gone back home voluntarily. And this morning I addressed about uh, 40 of them and they have already taken off. In fact, they have already arrived in Mogadishu. And so this is, this is a voluntary process. So the uh, United Nations is really working. We have United Nations High Commission for Refugees, one of Somali sites who are receiving these people, so uh, I think it is going to be um, a well-planned process. Yeah. Okay. Well, the Council of Imams and Preachers of Kenya have condemned perpetrators of hate speech. Uh, the Islamic leaders are calling for the prosecution of politicians accused of promoting hate speech. They addressed the media in Mombasa. Kwanza tunawasihi viongozi hawa wasijidai wanatetea viongozi wao wanapofanya hivyo wanawaharibia wale viongozi wao sifa yao kwa kuwa wao wanatamka maneno yanaweza kuhatarisha amani tunaomba kiongozi huyu wa dini pop awasihi viongozi hawa wa siasa wawache kutumia maneno mabaya wawache kutumia hotuba za chuki Nchi hii inahitaji amani zaidi na ni nchi inayoheshimu dini. Kwa hivyo tuwaomba Pope atumie nafasi hii kikamilifu. Tunasikitishwa kuona viongozi wanakusanya watu wengi 
mitandao inachukua vyombo vya habari vinachukua na bado waendesha mashtaka na wale walinda usalama bado wana sita mpaka kelele zipigwe na wananchi wenyewe ndio wachukue hatua kwa hivyo tunataka na wao wawajibike wakitoa wajibika wao ukumbuke usalama ukivurugika hakuna mtu atakayekuwa na raha kwa hivyo wao wachukue majukumu yao yoyote anayetamka maneno mabaya aweze kuchukua hatua haraka Right, and we want to speak to our reporter John Juma, who actually was in that particular uh, news conference to just give us some of the things that uh, the Muslim leader there did not mention. Uh, John, thank you very much for joining us uh, on a KTN News Desk. Evidently, the, the, the sentiments from the leaders is quite clear that, you know, the, the hate speech uh, mongers, so to speak, uh, should be brought to book. But uh, did the leaders say anything that they will actively do to ensure that this prosecutions actually happen? Uh, what ADK is saying is that uh, the Constitution is, uh, has provision for the prosecution of these people. And so uh, what is required is at least one leader should be prosecuted and uh, to act as an example to others because so far they're saying that uh, things that are happening, the are in the media, but police officers are not doing enough. Other uh, relevant uh, organs uh, are, are not up to task. And so what they're saying is that uh, the concerned organs need to up their game and, and say at the time that... <laughs> Seems like we've had an issue with uh, John Juma. He must have put us on hold. But we will try and get to get back to that uh, conversation with John Juma shortly after this short commercial break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The NN News Desk at 20 minutes past uh, 1 p.m. Now I want to go back to that conversation that we were having earlier on with uh, John Juma and it's in regard to the Council of Imams and Preachers of Kenya who have come out to condemn perpetrators of hate speech. Well, the Islamic leaders uh, have called for the prosecution of politicians accused of promoting hate speech. John Juma, uh, thank you for uh, calling us back. Um, John, you were talking about uh, the issue to do with... Uh, what the, the, what the leaders were talking about, uh, the hate speech that at least they want at least one um, politician who has uh, uh, said words that have been, of course, rubbed people the wrong way and considered as uh, hate speech prosecuted. Yes, but you're very right. Let me think that there have been several cases of hate speech in this country, yet not a single leader uh, is behind the bars as we speak. And so what they're saying is that uh, the country needs to set an example by having a politician, a leader who participates in uh, this inflammatory uh, statement to be prosecuted and be jailed and to set an example to others. Otherwise, as things are, the the, the worry that uh, it may degenerate into violence and then our courts may not even have uh, 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 that uh, the capacity. Uh, it will be the idea of international criminal court coming in, yet we can still uh, handle this matter at the moment. That's why the CIPK is, uh, is saying uh, that when the Pope visits, some of these people, some of these politicians who are engaging in hate speech are Christians, and particularly some of them, if they happen to be Catholics, the Pope should be able to talk to them and warn them of the dangers that they're trying to, to pose uh, uh, to this country. Again, they also demanded that when Pope comes and uh, he should address the issue of some schools, uh, Christian schools barring Muslim students from using hijab in their studies. Hijab is a requirement, a, a, a religious requirement for any lady to cover the hair, the head. But uh, to some Christian schools, uh, they're saying that uh, some of the students have not been allowed to study in those schools simply because they can't use their hijab and they want the top when he visits to address some of those issues, Betty. Wow, uh, interesting issues that have come out uh, of that particular press conference. But um, maybe finally, 
this conference comes just a day after uh, Tana River Senator Ali Bule was actually freed on bond after he uh, engaged in hate speech a few months ago. Did they react to this particular um, issue? They are very general. They didn't go to specific cases of those who've participated, of those who've been alleged to participate in hate speech, but they are a bit general that the cases are known. They're always captured in mainstream media, in social media, but they're worried that concerned organs are not playing the rightful role. Thank you very much, uh, John Juma, speaking to us uh, from the coast region, just giving us an update of what um, uh, Muslim leaders there had to say about hate speech, asking that at least one um, guilty person should at least be uh, prosecuted. Well, we now want to cross over and take a look at sports and uh, interesting stories uh, here I'm seeing. Real Madrid and PSV Eindhoven uh, players were among thousands of people to cast their votes to decide who will make it into the 2015 World Team of the Year. Cristiano Ronaldo, Gareth Bill and Sergio Ramos and James Rodriguez were among the players to make choices at the club's training ground. For PSV, the Mexican pair of Andres uh, Guadado and Hector Moreno as well as uh, Captain Luc Dijon were among the players to cast their votes. FIFPRO, uh, the world's FIFA, the World Soccer Players Union, will collect votes from all over the world before announcing the most voted 55 names on November 26. Yeah. I'll go for Buffon, man. He, he brought Juventus to the final. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just two weeks since he was released on parole, Oscar Pistorius' lawyers are back in court today to try to keep their client from returning to jail. South African Paralympian Oscar Pistorius, after serving a fifth of his prison term for killing his girlfriend, faces years more in jail if state lawyers can get his conviction scaled up to murder from culpable homicide. Before the Supreme Court, that uh, High Court uh, judge was wrong to, left, to let Pistorius off the more serious charge after he fired four shots through a door on Valentine's Day 2013, killing Riva Stenkamp. Uh, Pistorius will not be present at the one-day hearing in uh, uh, Bloemfestone. 400 kilometers southwest of Johannesburg, a panel of five judges will hear the appeal and could either order a retrial, convict Pistorius of murder or reject the prosecution's appeal, legal experts have said. ...established that the prosthesis used by Oscar Pistorius give him an advantage over other athletes who are not using the same device. Oscar Pistorius is therefore eligible to compete in IWF events provided that he uses the same prosthesis that were tested under the supervision of the IWF and which were presented before the tribunal. So it's going to go down in history for the, for the equality of, of disabled people. For, uh, I think it's, it's such a significant day in sports. Um, but as I say, I'm just so happy about the outcome. It's just, uh, the last two days has been really stressful, but the, you know, just the outcome has been uh, one of the best days of my life. Can you show me? Yeah. Okay. 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 Gail Monfields was sent packing in the first round of the Paris Masters on Monday when he slumped to a 2-6, 7-6 and 6-4 defeat by fellow Frenchman Benoit Poiré. Monfields, the world number 20, seems to be cruising towards a straightforward victory in the renovated Bercy Hall after opening up a 6-2-4-0 lead. But then he lost focus 
Korea forced a tie break, which he won 9-7 and broke decisively in the ninth game of the third set, finishing it off on his first match point with an um, aggregate. Next in line for uh, pair is another Frenchman, Gael Simon. While number one Novak Djokovic will also open his title defense on Tuesday in a second round match against Brazilian Thomas Bellucci. That dose of thoughts brings us to the end of part one of uh, KTN News. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Becky Okari.